Welcome back. Tonight we're going to be discussing Bell's palsy. And as you all know by now, I'm Brandy B, the community MP. And I'm Brandy G, the community MP. And so B, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's talk about Bell's palsy. And we are doing this topic because we actually had a viewer who asked about this topic. She said that her daughter um, was diagnosed with Bell's palsy and she wanted to find out more information about Bell's palsy. So here we, we are. Here we are. So what is Bell's palsy? Do you want me to tell him, B, or do you want to tell him? I can tell him what Bell's palsy is. So okay. it's a condition that causes a temporary unilateral weakness or paralysis of the muscles in the face. So unilateral just means one side of the face um, mm -hmm. is usually affected. It occurs like if the facial nerve is compressed or inflamed or swollen. Okay. So what causes Bell's palsy? Um, actually, the cause is unknown, but research has shown that they believe it's caused by a virus, viral infections. And usually the most common viral infection is herpes simplex virus. But also other infections can cause it, bacteria and both viral infections as such as sarcoidosis, Epstein-Barr, um, HIV, Lyme disease, multiple sclerosis, herpes zoster, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. And so did it say like if it was um, with the herpes simplex, if it's one or two, or does it matter? So it, it just say herpes simplex virus. Well, so it, 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 yeah, with herpes now, it can be, you know, one can be on the face, which it used, it used to be herpes one was like the facial lesion. It, yeah, like um, mouth ulcers and sores, cold sores. Yeah, and then herpes but now they have them both. On the so on the on the lips and in other places too. Okay, yeah, the genital region, but that happened because oral sex became more popular, and so um, now you get herpes one in the genitals and herpes two on your mouth. Yeah, but, yep. yeah. Back to Bell's That's another palsy. another topic for another day. <laughs> Different topic for another day. But, but let's talk about the signs and symptoms B, of Bell's palsy. Yeah. So um, usually it's a sudden onset, um, gra well, so sudden meaning like within hours. And yeah, then like 48 hours, I think they say it was like within 48 hours it usually occurs. Yeah, and then so some, some things that you may notice is like your eyebrows sagging, notice that you're drooling, inability to close your eye, which causes like eye irritation. Um, disappearance of the nasolabial fold so that's that fold right here yeah that fold right there um decreased tearing mm -hmm. headaches loss of taste to the anterior two-third part, parts of the tongue and sensitivity to sound so sometimes sound um can irritate your ears or be painful yeah and then the of course the drooping in, in the mouth so usually like one corner of the yeah. mouth will, will droop Good so, so no, I'm just saying, no, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just saying, so when that side droops, this side usually pulls up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So like that's that. similar to like a stroke. So it is. So that that's one of the that's one of the similarities to um Bell's palsy. Usually because it's unilateral, like say one side. Mm -hmm. And just that side of the face, that that nerve, that facial nerve, it controls the muscles of the face. So therefore, those muscles of the face don't work anymore. So it looks like a Stroke. Yep. It does. So some of the risk factors for Bell's palsy um pregnancy, diabetes, and not only just diabetes, any chronic illness, because any chronic illness can lower your immune system, okay, which can put you at risk. Having a cold, the flu, or any type of upper respiratory um, infection or viral, viral infection. Also, a family history of Bell's palsy can also put you at risk for Bell's palsy. Well, how is it diagnosed? Being? It is diagnosed by, um, usually it can be diagnosed by just looking at the physical symptoms. So when the patient comes in and you see how they're presenting, like if you see the facial droop or. So you uh, want to tell, you, I'm sorry, B, I didn't want to cut you over. You want to tell me what to do? Want me to smile? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you smile big and you have the paralysis, it'll, yeah, you'll have one side drooping. Um, you may not be able to raise your eyebrows. One eyebrow may, I can't raise one eyebrow <laughs> without raising the other one. 
Yeah, it is. Yeah. So one eyebrow might be raised. You may not be able to close your eye all the way. So it may just be like that <laughs> when you try to close it. I'm sure this is entertaining. <laughs> but um, yeah. So, and then you can do an EMG, blood work. It, usually the blood work is just to check for viruses. Um, imaging of the brain, um, the temporal bone, the product gland, either with the CT or MRI. Um, and I think the imaging is just to rule out any other thing, making sure you don't have a tumor or a mass or something else that can be causing you to have those paralysis. So that's like one of the, the latest things that they, yeah. one of the last things that they will do just to rule out any other thing else, any other medical problems that may be causing you to have the Bell's palsy or the, the paralysis. Especially, yeah, especially if they think that you're having a stroke, then you're immediately going to get imaging of the brain. Yeah. Okay, okay. So some of the treatments. You about to say something? I mean, to I was, no, you're good. I was just going to say, um, how's it treated? Oh, okay. <laughs> Short-term steroids, because I, I can remember, um, I was in like a lot of Bell's palsy patients when I was doing ENT. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that um, my collaborative physician would tell me was we want to do a burst of steroids. We, we would start like at 80 milligrams, like we do a burst of tapering of steroids for about several days. Just to see if, it, if there was any inflammation of that facial nerve, that nerve that controls your face, mm -hmm. to see if the steroids would help, you know, relieve that inflammation. Yeah. So short-term um, oral steroids, antivirals, um, over-the-counter pain medications, like Tylenol, ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. Eye care is very important. Like you say, you may not be able to close your eyes. So usually you may have to get some lubricant eye drop because if you can't close your eye, your eye dries out. Mm -hmm. And that can cause you to have cornea problems. So that's important. Um, I remember one of the patients, we had to do a patch. We had to put a patch on their eye so that the eye wouldn't dry out. They will put drops in the eyes, lubricating drops, and we did a patch on their eye. Doing a um, warm compress, warm towel compress to relieve the pain. Let's see what else we have. Facial massage and physical therapy. You can go to physical therapy, so you can do some type of facial muscle exercises, exercises that'll help also. Yeah, so the good thing is, you know, 70% um, of the patients are expected to recover within like three to six months. So gradually, it's a sudden onset, but it's gradual improvement. So it takes a while for it to get better, um, but the it can progress for up to three, three weeks. weeks. Yes, yes. And recovery can take up to... Um, Four to six months. Yeah. Yes, yes. So that's it in a nutshell for Bell's palsy. I mean, it's something that I, I'm sure is scary if you ever get it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there is a percentage of people who don't recover. So just imagine um, having, have, having that facial paralysis on one side and you don't recover. So I know those patients, sometimes they have to get plastic surgery just yeah. to yeah. help correct that. So it is something that's it's unknown. Like we say, um, what causes it is really unknown. But they're thinking it's viral, especially the herpes simplex virus that causes it. But yeah. they really don't know. That's very true. But yeah, so if you have any questions about Bell's palsy or you have a story you want to share with us, we would be glad to um, discuss it on our channel or on our YouTube, Facebook. And we're planning to do some uh, more live. So if you see us live, just hop on. We're there to answer questions for you guys um, and just be community health nurse practitioners. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and be how we always sell them it. Community is our beauty. Yeah.